Hey everyone, I'm Melanie from Streamline Legal, where we help law firms get the most out of their practice management software. I'm so excited to be here tonight. We're going to give everyone just a minute to log on, make sure everybody's ready, and then we're going to go ahead and move forward. I have to tell you before we start, it has been quite a week. I don't know if you guys had the same experience, but it's probably worth getting up, going over to the kitchen, grabbing that wine, making sure that you're relaxed. We're gonna talk about a lot of technology and I want to make sure that you're taking it all in and you're not just feeling the stress of the day. So please do that. Enjoy responsibly, of course. And we'll get started here just momentarily. So just a few announcements before we get started here. Please do feel free to take advantage of that chat box. I see Amanda's already found it. Thanks for joining us, Amanda. And um, I will be sharing my screen here in just a minute so that you guys can all see what I'm talking about. Um, I also wanted to go ahead and let's see here. We're going to be talking about technology. We're gonna be talking about people. We're gonna be talking about change. We're gonna be talking about everything that you need to be able to create that virtual office. So give me one second here and we will get started right away. Okay, excellent. So again, thanks for joining me. I'm Melanie from Streamline Legal, where we help law firms get the most out of their practice management software. So it's been a crazy week, guys. Um, I don't know about you. My kids uh, came home from school today and were told that they're not coming back for another three weeks. So we've got a lot of stuff to do. Um, so what I really want, my goal for tonight is to make your lives easier. What I'm really hoping is that by the end of this evening, and we're going to try and keep it to an hour, I'm going to, my goal is that you guys are going to be able to feel very comfortable having a virtual office. Now, some of you may already have a virtual office. That's great. We're going to talk about some best practices and some things that you can do to improve that. Some of you may not have um, a virtual office yet, and that's okay too. We're going to talk about some of the things that you should focus on. So I want to let you know that at the end of this presentation, I will be emailing you all a link to the presentation in case you found it helpful and want to share it with others or if you want just to be able to review it to remember what happened. Um, the other thing that you'll get is a checklist. I'm gonna send you guys a checklist so that you can go ahead and go through all the items that we discussed tonight to make sure that there are things that you don't forget. And lastly, I'm gonna go ahead and send you a resource page. It's going to list a lot of the products and the websites that we talk about tonight, so you don't feel like you have to take copious notes, um, but they will help you in establishing that virtual office. So let's talk about the virtual office. This doesn't mean that you have to have a virtual office for the rest of your career or the rest of the life of this firm. Really, the goal tonight is to make sure that you have that option so that if you decide that you want to take your firm virtual for a short period of time or for a long period of time, you have that option and you don't feel like your business is going to suffer or has to um, be, um, have a hardship because of that. And so I wanna challenge some ideas that you might have tonight. Um, I want to challenge the idea that you might have that maybe your clients want to meet you in the office. Um, there are lots of virtual firms out there and in fact if you've seen the most recent Clio Legal Trends report, it actually says there are plenty of the clients that don't want to meet you in the office um, for many of occasions and many reasons. So um, I also want to challenge the idea that people think sometimes that if you're virtual then people won't take you seriously. And that's simply not true either. Most of my clients don't even know that we run a virtual company, frankly. Um, I'm meeting with them via video conference, and I did the same thing when I had my law firm. Um, you know, people didn't necessarily even know. 
Um, so that's another myth that I kind of want to put aside. And then the last one that I was thinking about a lot tonight is, you know, some people think that you won't be able to uh, sell your services by having a virtual firm, you know, and that might be true to some extent. Maybe in this period of time when we're practicing this social distancing, maybe you aren't able to meet your clients in an office the way that you had originally intended or set out to do, but that doesn't mean that you can't ever do it. Um, so I just want to put those myths aside and let you know that there are tons of people out there with virtual offices. I myself ran my law firm for about six of the 12 years as a virtual firm. I still have a virtual office. We have 16 members, none of whom are in the same state. Um, so there's a lot of great tools out there and ways that we can make this work. And maybe more personally to you, I'm confident that within your local community, you probably know someone with a virtual office as well. So please feel free to reach out to those people, reach out to us. There are some great resources out there that can make this a lot easier for you. So I do want to keep this somewhat um, interactive as much as we can on a, on a uh, webcast. So I wanted to go out there go ahead and throw a poll out there for you. Um, I want to see how many of you are virtual already. And what this will do is this will help us gear this talk to be more specific for you. And so if you can go ahead and click on that poll and just let me know how many of you are already in a virtual situation, and that way we can skip ahead to some of the more advanced stuff. Or if we've got some people that are not quite in a virtual situation, then we can go ahead and uh, cover that those issues as well. So yeah, thanks for uh, going ahead and clicking on those buttons. It's pretty cool to see the uh, poll update as soon as you click. So I'm excited to see who's out there. Again, thanks for joining us tonight. I'm gonna go ahead and give us one more minute here and then we're going to turn close that poll and I can share some of those results with you. So this is fantastic. We've got, um, yeah, we've got, you know, we're thinking that about half of the things or maybe a little bit more that we do in the office, we would be able to do virtually, which is awesome. So it sounds like we're probably not starting from scratch, but there are some improvements that we could make as far as tools that we can use to make sure that we're just taking it as far as we can and getting the most out of it. So thank you so much for participating in that. So let's see. We're going to go ahead and move on here. So the first thing I want to talk to you tonight, and the first thing that you'll see on your checklist when I send it to you, is we want to make sure that you and your team have all of the tools that you need. So number one, first and foremost, we want to make sure that you guys all have computers that you can work from. Now, a lot of people may already have laptops that they're working from at the office, easy enough to take those home, of course, even desktop computers. You know, if you're actually moving the whole firm virtual for a period of time, there's not going to be anyone in the office to use those computers. So just take them home. I mean, take the ones from the office home so you don't feel like you have to buy all new computers. Now, if you're in the market for new computers, fantastic. That's great too. But keep in mind, another thing that might be helpful, even if you get those new computers, take the monitors from the office maybe. Um, it can be a lot easier to work when you've got those monitors, um, second screens, to be able to work at home. So especially if there's no one in the office, please take that stuff home so that you can feel more comfortable um, being able to get more stuff done using the tools that you're used to. Um, now, one tip is you may want to create a list of who's taking what, whether it's computers or keyboards or mice or whatever else you've got. Um, make sure that you make a list of that and who took it so that we can make sure to get it back once we do reassemble in the office at whatever time that is. Um, when you're talking to your team, and by the way, we wanna do a lot of talking with our team before we go virtual, as we go virtual, when we go virtual, communication is the key to making this work. So I wanna make sure that when you do talk to your team about what computer they're gonna use and what technology they have at home, let's make sure that they're using as much as possible a dedicated computer. You don't want the family computer where the kids and the teenagers are playing their online games to be the same computer that you're using for work. Um, 
despite the fact that now we're gonna have some time sharing issues, you know, we just don't want that exposure. Um, we'd rather have as much security as possible. So to the extent you're able, please use a separate computer. Um, that will make life a lot easier for everybody. Um, another tool that I would recommend, if you have scanners at the office that are practical to bring home or printers, that's great. If you don't, or if you don't have enough of them, then I would look at your phone. You know, a lot of, there are a lot of scanning apps available on the phone these days. Not to mention, if you're using Dropbox, Dropbox actually has scanning capability within the Dropbox app on your phone or on your tablet. So that's a real nice tool that you can use without having to spend a lot of money. Um, we are going to be cost conscious as well in this conversation. I know that a lot of people are concerned about losing business as they move their firm virtual or maybe not even having to do anything with the virtual um, aspects of the firm, but more with the idea that um, as everybody is practicing the social distancing, it makes life a lot uh, more challenging and maybe they're not uh, able to attend work. Maybe there's a lot of reasons why they're not going to use your services. So if you are concerned about that, we're conscious of that and we will talk about cost as well as we move through these recommendations. So um, I also want you to double check the software that you're going to be using. Make sure the computers that you're going to be using have the software that you need. As much as possible, please try and use the exact same software you were using in the office. We don't want to have to uh, learn all new software just because we're moving and switching uh, locations. So once we've got the computers, the scanners, all that technology together and we know what we're using, we next wanna look at our internet connection. And for this, I'm gonna share a screen here so that you can see what we're looking at. If I can find the screen. Um, the thing that I'm most concerned about when we're working uh, at home and to make sure that we can accommodate all this communication is I want to make sure that we have really excellent internet connections. And so if you Google speed test, you'll get the results that you see. Ah, that's a lot of results. Hold on one second here. Let's see here. There we go. Hmm. Too many screens, people, too many windows. It's a lot going on here. So if you Google speed test, you will see this result. And if you click simply on run speed test, it's going to tell you how fast your internet connection is. Now, we do not want to have to pay people to be unproductive. We don't want to have to pay them to watch a slow internet connection. And so this is one of the places where I would highly recommend that once you take a look at your internet connections and your internet speeds of all of your team members, you uh, think about the idea of maybe paying more to get a faster speed. Because again, the amount of frustration that your clients are going to feel um, can, or I should say your team members are going to feel, uh, can be palpable. And we want to make sure that we're making their lives as easy as possible so that they can go ahead and get as much work done as possible. And a slow and frustrating internet speed is not going to be helpful. Not to mention we're going to talk a lot in a few minutes about video conferencing and that is not going to go very well with poor internet connection. So this is one place where I would recommend that you go ahead and make sure to um, pay extra if you need to in order to make sure those speeds are something that we can work with and live with um, for the foreseeable future. The amount of speed that you want, by the way, is 1.5, um, and that's for upload and for download. You, you saw my speed is much faster, so it makes for a much easier work day. Um, but make sure that you have at least the 1.5 or else it's going to be a bit of a challenge. Um, the next thing we're going to look at once we've got computers all set up, we've got an internet connection that we can work with, is phone access. We need to start thinking about our phone access. We want to make sure that we can make both those outgoing calls and those incoming calls, uh, receive the incoming calls. And that could be a challenge depending on what type of phone line you have. If you have a, a landline at the office, then um, that's gonna make things a lot more challenging. If you are already working with a voice over IP line, that's fantastic. 
If you're looking to um, use a voice over IP line or purchase a voice over IP service, that's fantastic as well. Um, but just keep in mind, uh, switching phone systems right now may not be the best idea when your team is just getting used to this whole new setup. So let me just to get an idea of um, what we're working with out there, I wanna go ahead and see how many of you already have a voice over IP line. So if you could go ahead and click that on the poll right there, then I can get kind of a feel for how many of you out there already have it. Fantastic. And, and we're going to talk about some of the features that really make that phone line work. And it looks like, I'm going to end this poll now since it looks like a lot of you have already responded here. Um, we're going to go ahead and share those results. And you can see that a lot of you are already dealing with voice over IP lines, which is awesome. Keep in mind a few things. We want to make sure that people are if, and if you don't have these features, by the way, on your voice over IP line, contact your service provider and see how to access them or how, uh, if they're available to you. But we want to make sure that people are using the app on their phones in order to go ahead and um, make those outgoing calls so that they can appear as if they're coming from the office line. So make sure that people are doing that. And um, you know, the nice thing about the voice over IP line, we can change those settings relatively easy, easily. So whether those calls are coming to someone's home line or cell phone line or you know, however we have those rules set up, um, those can be very helpful. If you don't have a voice over IP or you're looking to switch, um, you, know, you can take a look at some uh, cost-effective methods, our uh, Google Voice. Um, they do have, Google does have a voice over IP product that works quite well. Um, so that's something that you can look into. We also have, though, um, there's a number of voice over IP uh, companies out there, such as Ring Central or um, Vonage. Um, but there's one in particular I wanted to point out to you that will be on your resource sheet as well. And that is this one here. And this one is Corvum. And the reason I pointed out is because they are specific to uh, law firms and to attorneys. And so they're dealing with attorneys day in and day out. They understand the concerns um, that you guys have. And so they've got some really nice features. So if you're in the market, do check them out because they, um, they do have a nice product there. And um, if you're working with a practice management software, they integrate with a lot of those as well. So go ahead and check that out. Um, the other thing that you can consider if you don't have a voice over IP line or if you do but still want this nice feature is hiring an answering service, a live answering service to go ahead and answer your phone lines. You can forward your line to them and then they can forward the calls uh, to whomever on your team is appropriate. And so that can be a really nice tool as well, especially when we don't have someone in the physical office location. Um, now that's going to be a little more costly, of course. Um, but if you have a landline or something that's not a voice over IP line, then that might be helpful for you. Um, and at the very least, if you have people that are placing calls from their home line or cell phones, we don't want to give that cell phone number out. Um, and we definitely want it to appear as professional as possible. So if we're not able to make an outgoing call using that, um, voice over IP technology or anything like that, please do use star six nine or whatever the applicable code is on your phone line in order to mask that uh, caller ID number so that the clients don't have that. So let's talk next about mail. We've done computers, internet, phone, we're looking at mail. And here's the thing, um, we can talk to the post office about forwarding mail. Now there are some restrictions with respect to um, businesses, so please do check with your post office. Um, and the other thing is, though, you may actually want to get out of the house every once in a while. Um, you know, if, if we're not um, going out in public as much as we did uh, last week, let's say, then getting out and being able to walk over to the office and grab that mail and walk around, make sure everything's the way we expect, um, that might be something nice. Otherwise, we want to come up with a system. We want to create a procedure now as to how mail is going to be handled. And so who's going to scan it? Who's going to get it? 
who, where are we going to put it? How are we going to notify people? These are all things that we need to determine now so that as soon as that mail starts coming in, we know exactly how to handle it. It doesn't have to be anything fancy. We just need to have it in writing. So even if it's just an email that goes around to everybody, but let's say who's going to do what by when so that we have that process already set so that that doesn't become an issue for us. Now do keep in mind if you take advantage of the forwarding service from the Postal Service um, or any other private service for that matter, um, it can cause delays. So if you get notices, um, for example, from the IRS or other uh, government entities via mail, um, we wanna make sure that you guys are getting those in a timely fashion and forwarding may not give you that timeliness. So make sure that you are aware of that when you decide how to handle that mail. Also make sure that people are bring, that bring routine deliveries to your office are um, know where you are and how to find you and what to do with your packages and what to do with your mail. Um, if you have a secure mailbox, then obviously they may be able to leave those there, but otherwise maybe put some contact information on a sign on the door so that you're not losing or um, you're not losing those FedEx packages or not getting those deliveries. Um, so mail is something we want to definitely keep in mind. Um, the next thing I want to address with you is document storage. Now this is a pretty big one and so that's why I put it towards the beginning. We need to make sure that everyone is able to access those documents when they need them. And so I want to do another quick poll here just to get a feel for the audience to see um, how many of you are already using cloud storage for your documents. And so I'm gonna go ahead and launch that poll. Let me know what you think. This could be a drinking game. Every time I launch a poll, maybe take a drink. I don't know. Okay. So it looks like most of you are using cloud storage. That is fantastic and I'm so glad to hear it. Um, I'm gonna go ahead and end that poll here and I'll share those results with you. So it looks like we've got uh, some forward thinkers when it comes to document storage and document management, which is fantastic. Um, a couple of things that I will mention about that though, is that if you have document storage, uh, cloud document storage, that's fantastic. But I want you to go ahead and audit those files. I want you to go ahead and just open a random file online and tell me if everything's in there. You know, are you missing things that you would expect to be in there? Are you um, not finding things? Uh, those are the kind of things that I think we need to review now because if we're going to start depending on these files more and more and maybe not have the paper files that we're used to or not have them as readily available, then we need to make sure that those files are as accurate as possible. So do an audit. Uh, do an audit. Um, if you not, if you don't have cloud storage now, I want to encourage you to start scanning your active files. You don't have to scan every file in the firm, but pick those out that you know you're dealing with on a daily basis and scan those first. Because if we need to drive back to the office to get a file on occasion, that might be able to work, but not if it's a file that we're using on a daily basis or that we're interacting with. So make sure that you are starting by scanning your most critical files. There may be a kid out of school that wants to earn a little extra money and would be happy to do some scanning for you. Take those files home, have an assistant take them home, and let's get those onto the cloud storage. If you don't have cloud storage, sign up for it already. Um, logging into your desktop at the office is not gonna work for this. We need to have those as readily available as possible. And keep in mind, that your practice management software may already have that in there. So for example, we've got on the screen here, we've got Clio, Clio has document storage. By the way, I know I have a lot of uh, listeners and viewers that use Clio. If you are not using their document storage, but you want to begin and you want to quickly upload a bunch of documents that you may have sitting on a server somewhere, please do reach out to us. I put it on the resource page, but there is a product called Faster Law, 
and they have decided to give our audience tonight a discount if you sign up for Faster Law. It is the only product out there that will bulk upload documents into Clio's document storage from you know, either other cloud services or from a server. So please do reach out to them, find their information on the resources page I'm gonna to send to you and uh, take advantage of that uh, discount that they're offering because it is a great product. Um, that brings us next to supplies. So there are other supplies that we may need as, depending on what type of practice you have. Um, we may need paper, we may need stamps, we may need envelopes, we may need toner, extension cords with surge protectors. Um, there's all kinds of things that we may need. Um, and I have to tell you, there is a great resource that you might have heard of before, and I will share it with you here. It's called Amazon. They're fantastic. They deliver, they deliver it right to your house. Um, you know, it doesn't have to be an office address. It can be your home, it can be your assistant's house. Make sure you have the address of your team members so that you can go ahead and add those into your Amazon account and make it super easy to get deliveries of those kind of supplies that you need. Um, the difference between Amazon, just regular Amazon, and the Amazon for Business that you see here is that Amazon for Business does allow different types of access to the account so that people can order, um, and then it, you know, other than owner, business owners. And then it also has um, some business reporting as well, some purchase reporting, which is nice. So make sure that um, you, even if you only use it on occasion, sign up for an Amazon business account or use your personal account, but make sure that you have that as a resource for you. Um, it doesn't get much easier than Amazon, frankly. So the other thing that I will say as far as supplies goes is we also want to think about those things that are going to make um, the tools we're using easier at home. So for example, we talked about bringing like your secondary screen or something from the office to make your life easier. Bringing that really nice desk chair that you're going to be sitting in all day at the office, at the home now instead of at the office. Um, that can be really nice. But another thing we're going to talk about in a few minutes is uh, video conferencing. And you're going to be doing a lot of that in order to connect with your uh, team members and connect with your clients. And so make sure that your team has um, either headphones or microphones or a combination that's easy for them to use for video conferencing. There are a lot of Bose headphones that include microphones on the uh, cords. So be careful if you're going wireless there. Um, the AirPods, the wireless AirPods do have a microphone on them as well. Um, even the Apple headphones that come with your, or I should say that used to come with the iPhone, those have microphones on them as well. And you know what, leave them on all day. I mean, block out the noise, block out the distractions, um, and use those specifically when you're doing your video conferencing because that will make the communication just that much easier. And then lastly, when we're talking about uh, tools that we need before we move on to our next topic, we're talking about practice management software. And for those of you that have ever worked with me or talked to me even in the past, I am a huge advocate of practice management software. And so if you have a practice management software and maybe you're not using it to its fullest capabilities, you're not using all the features, now's the time to lean in. Now's the time to make sure that your contacts are in your practice management software. You know, make sure that we don't have to spend 10 minutes searching for an email address. We're going to talk about how it differs when you're working at home and how time um, needs to be managed differently when you're working at home than when you're working in the office. And so when you're at home, if you have a limited number of hours to do your work and get it done, you especially at that point don't want to be spending 10 minutes looking for someone's contact information. So if there's features within your practice management software that you're not using like document automation or other things, now's the time to really dig in and start learning those features and start learning what you're already paying for so that you can go ahead and get the most out of it. For those of you that don't have practice management software yet, in fact, that's a really great poll drink. I'm gonna go ahead and put a poll up here for you so that we can see 
how many of you are already working with practice management software. So if you don't mind clicking up there for me as you take your drink. Excellent, thank you. Next time I should probably send the drinks out ahead of time so that you guys are ready. Um, okay, I'm gonna go ahead and end that poll. I really appreciate your cooperate or your participation, I should say. And I'll go ahead and share those results. And it looks like most of us are using practice management software, which I'm thrilled about. Um, a few holdouts there, which is understandable. Um, but again, on the resource page, there will be a link to um, Clio if you're interested in checking that out. They have a free trial. Um, but Frankly, there's a ton of them out there and whatever you use, just make sure you use something because again, this is not the time that we want to spend, um, you know, extra time looking for things or trying to get things done. So I'm going to go ahead and end those, uh, take those results back. Um, we're going to move on now from talking about tools um, to talking about your team. And I mentioned earlier that we're going to use a lot of communication with our team to make sure that we're able to give them the resources that they need, make sure that they have what they need in order to succeed. And so there's a couple of things I want you to talk to them about, preferably before you go virtual, but even if you've already gone virtual, um, talk to them about that at this point, whatever, as soon as possible is my point. Um, the first thing is time structuring. So there is a lot of temptation for a lot of people when they're working from home to maybe not structure their day the same way they would in an office. And so maybe, you know, you roll around to the computer when you wake up, check a few emails, go put some laundry into the laundry machine, come back, write a couple more emails. Um, there's, there's a lot of distractions and we'll talk about some of the biggest distractions coming up soon. But um, if we get into some routines like having a morning huddle, Maybe everybody in the team, on the team meets up online for a few minutes in the morning, points out the things they're gonna be focusing on for the day, points out their wins, points out their challenges. Um, that's a real good way for us to start our morning and build in some structure. Um, another thing that we can do is some calendar blocking. We can go ahead and look at our calendars and say, okay, well from here, you know, from 10 o'clock to 1130, I'm going to basically say this is my time to work on this particular brief. And we're gonna be super productive, we're gonna knock it out, and then we're gonna move on. And so being able to do that calendar blocking and those morning huddles, or maybe we have lunch meetings, or maybe we have, you know, end of the day wrap ups, whatever you, however you wanna structure it, but being able to give your team some structure in that regard will be, uh, can be very helpful. Um, the other thing I want you to talk to them about is where they're going to work. Are you going to be working at the kitchen table? Are you going to be working in the car? <laughs> whatever, the, whatever their options are. But I will tell you that some of the best places to work are places that have some uh, seclusion, some ability to close off the rest of the house, close a door, be able to do that. If you have a home office, that's fantastic, of course. A guest room can act as a home office as well. Um, but even think outside the box. I mean, a really great place, I think, is a walk-in closet. I mean, the sound doesn't bounce off of anything. It's all cushioned by the clothes. Um, you know, if it's a walk-in closet, you have some room maybe to sit and have a desk, a small desk. Um, a laundry room can work. It has a door you can close. Hopefully, you're not doing laundry while you're working. But, um, you know, those kind of areas where we can close off a door or section off a piece of the house is going to be a lot more helpful and help you focus um, than maybe, you know, sitting at the dining room table where people are walking by, where kids are trying to do some schoolwork, you know, whatever the situation is. Um, and of course, we talked about bringing those things from the office. Bring the standing desk if you can, um, you know, bring the adjustable chair, it'll make your life so much easier. Um, bring that rest, wrist pad for your mouse. We don't want carpal tunnel while we're working at home. Um, so those are the kind of things that I would think about. Now, obviously, you can't make this decision for them. You can't say, I want you to work in the laundry room. Um, you know, that's obviously not going to work. But I do want you to have that conversation with them and encourage them to give it some thought before they just go home and sit down at the kitchen table and, um, you know, have a lot of trouble focusing. 
So definitely something that I want you to be able to talk to them about and talk to them about having the space to be able to walk away from it. You know, we want them to have some downtime. We want them to have some off time. So, you know, if you're, if you're eating dinner at the exact same place where you did all your work all day, that's not really giving it any physical separation. And so having that physical separation can be really helpful. Okay, what's the biggest distraction? Guys, the kids are out of school for at least three weeks. Drink to that. Mm. Seriously. I'm already thinking of things that my kids are going to be doing while they're not in school. We are very fortunate. Our school has already set up some online learning opportunities and there will be things they're expected to do from the school, which I'm very thankful for. But I'm sure it won't be, you know, six or eight hours a day. Um, so my kids are going to learn how to play an instrument. We've got some instruments around the house. We've got YouTube. Any instrument you want to learn how to play, you can learn on YouTube. And that's what they're going to be doing. There are so many online places to find worksheets and coloring sheets, depending on the age of your kids. And they're going to read. Um, my kids have not yet started reading on tablets. And now that we're going to be spending less time going around to places like a library, they're going to learn uh, that you can read books on the tablet too, uh, not just play games. And so, you know, obviously I am no parenting expert, just so you know, but I do have kids and I do know what it's like to try and work from home with kids. And so, um, you know, those are some things that we need to take into consideration, not just for ourselves, but for our staff as well. Um, this may be a situation where you have staff members that need to get more done in less amount of time. You know, if we're talking about small kids, then it may be a situation where we're working during naps, we're working at night, you know, we're trying to squeeze those things in. Maybe your kids have attention span for a 30 minute TV show and that's when you're gonna have to get as much done as possible. So we need to really rely on our team and we need to be able to talk with our team to say, okay, what's your situation? What what are you able to contribute and figure out who's going to cover what when to make sure that, you know, we're not just making assumptions. We're not just assuming that they're going to be able to get all this done. We're, we're really talking to our team to figure out how we as a collective team are going to handle this workload. Um, so we can rely on team members, you know, everyone's got a different situation. Maybe one person has kids, one person doesn't. Um, you know, we need to figure that out and talk amongst each other to figure out what's fair and equitable and what people can and cannot contribute to. Um, so survey your team, figure out what they can accomplish, and don't just make assumptions because you may or may not be right about it. Um, so that's what I would recommend in talking with your team. So we talked a lot about communication being key. Um, we're going to need to communicate a lot. We're going to need to communicate, maybe over communicate in some situations, especially with our team internally. And we want to stay in touch with our clients, obviously, as well. So I would highly, highly, highly recommend um, that you look at some video conferencing tools. Um, there, actually, you know what? Drink. I've got a poll for that. Let's do it. Who's using video conferencing already? Go ahead, click the screen. Ah, it's like a race. They're neck and neck, I gotta tell you. Okay, thank you for participating. I'm gonna go ahead and end that poll and show you those results. So yeah, we're like all tied up, guys. Um, that's fantastic. I'm excited to see that some of you are using it. Um, we're gonna talk about communication, video conferencing, and the otherwise. And these are some tools that you, I cannot stress enough how much they're gonna help you stay in touch with your team and with your clients. And so let me put that poll down there. Um, let's start with video conferencing. Hands down, the number one standard right now is a tool called Zoom. If you haven't heard of it, I'm surprised. Um, it's very, very popular. I would highly recommend that you go ahead and check them out. In fact, we've got, let's see. Oh, 
there we go. We've got Zoom up here. They do a lot of things. They do one-on-one um, -on -one meetings, webinars, conference rooms, phone systems, instant messaging, all kinds of stuff. Um, the reason I bring it up is because A1, the quality is just outstanding, assuming that you have that good internet connection that we were talking about earlier. It has a ton of features. It's easy to use. And um, don't forget, there is a free package as well. So don't feel like, you know, I can't do video conferencing because that's going to be another added expense. Um, there is a free plan. It has unlimited one-on-one -on -one meetings. They're secure. So I would highly recommend that you look into that. Grab that website if you need to. It's on our reference or on our resources page. Um, you can do group meetings as well, up to 40 minutes. So um, that can be a very nice tool. Now, for those of you concerned about your clients and how they'll be able to interact with that Zoom conference, um, Zoom has a setting that you can find that will allow you to offer your clients a web-based um, video conference. So they don't have to download any software. It just lets them go to a web page and participate in that meeting. So depending on your clientele, that might be something really appealing to you. Now keep in mind the re accessing it through the website doesn't have quite as many features, but if you're just video chatting one-on-one -on -one, you're, and you're not screen sharing or anything fancy like that, um, then that may be all you need and it might be easier for them. So definitely check out Zoom, it's a fantastic tool. For those of you that use um, Gmail and Google already, I would highly recommend that you take a look at Google Hangouts, which we've got right over here. Um, it's a Chrome plugin and you can do video conferencing, you can do um, file sharing, chat, all kinds of great things. This I find much more easy to use with my team internally because I can just in a moment's notice click on a button and, and I'm chatting with them, you know, via video. Um, it's a great, great tool. It's free or rather it's included in your um, Gmail account. And really, if you're using Gmail, it's a no-brainer. Like, you should absolutely be using it. Um, there's another great tool I want to tell you about. Um, it's called Loom. And Loom does um, screen and video recording. It is not a video conferencing tool. It just records the videos. Um, but it allows you to show things on a screen, explain things on a screen, and email videos to people without clogging up their inbox because they house the video on a server somewhere else. Your, your recipient just has to click on a link. That's a fantastic tool as well, um, especially if you're trying to make training videos or show someone how to do something on the computer. It can be a really excellent tool. They had a really excellent response to um, the current situation that we're in that I want to play for you real quick. So I'm going to go ahead and share that with you here. Hi there. My name is Joe. I'm one of the co-founders and CEO here at Loom. And in response to COVID-19, we are making some changes to the Loom platform. The first one is that effective immediately, our pricing structure is going to change. For Loom Basic, which is our free offering, there will now be unlimited recording and sharing. For Loom Pro, we're extending the trial period from 14 to 30 days as well as reducing the prices by 50%. We're also making Loom Pro free for the education sector for forever. These last six weeks have been an incredibly sobering experience, and we believe that it's far from over. So inaction to us very simply felt wrong. Our mission statement is to empower everyone at work to communicate more effectively wherever they are. And at a time when the world is avoiding physical contact, we know that Loom can help. How do we know this? We actually do something called Remote Week every other month where we shut the doors of the Loom office here in San Francisco. Everybody on the Loom team works full-time remote. The, the last time we did this was the last week of uh, February, and we set a record of us using our own platform by 40%. We're also seeing in countries that have been impacted the most by COVID-19, like China and Italy, a spike in usage, and so we want to do everything we can to make Loom more accessible to those that are being impacted by this situation. The key benefits of Loom, and for those that don't know, I'm actually using Loom to record this right now, camera bubble, audio, screen recording, and it's incredibly efficient because you can talk six times faster than you can type. It's effective because video content is retained at 95% versus plain text 
is only 10%. This is gonna reduce a ton of back and forth. And then it's also just simply more expressive to see someone's face, to hear their voice at a time when we are avoiding physical contact. This cannot be overstated in terms of importance from a human perspective. So we sincerely hope that these changes help. If you want more information, please visit loom.com slash COVID-19. Thank you for listening. So technology aside, it's a great product. It's a great tool. It can really help you. Um, but what a great response. I mean, if we looked at our firms and figured out how we may be able to help our clients in a time like this, I think that we can really be creative and find some service offerings maybe that we hadn't thought of before or adjust our service offerings to better um, help our clients. And so that's something that I would encourage you to do, um, you know, whether you adjust your pricing or how you want to handle that's up to you, of course. But, um, you know, I think it's a fantastic opportunity for us to go ahead and become more creative in the way that we're offering our services to our clients. So check out Loom because it is free as well, as he mentioned. Um, and then the last one I'll mention here is Slack. Um, you know, it would be um, a great understatement to say that Slack is a tool that um, does chat because it does so much more than chat. Um, it allows your team to share documents, share information, um, track communications without having to um, use so much internal email. And so it's a fantastic tool. They also have a free version. So if you wanna check that out, um, and it's really great, again, for internal use and reducing uh, internal emails. So check that out also. Um, I will say when we're talking about communicating um, with our clients, another tool that we can use is a client portal um, and being able to store documents and store information in a client portal where our clients can access it 24 seven, whether we're around, whether we're not around, whether we can answer their question at the moment or not, um, a client portal can be very, very helpful. And so check out, if you have practice management software already, check out the tools that they have. Um, a lot of practice management software has client portals already and will allow you to share documents or information um, with your clients. So for example, we've got uh, Clio here and I can share this motion to withdraw with my client simply by clicking on the button. Maybe I wanna send them a message, maybe I don't. Um, but we can go ahead and do that just with a click of a button. And so that's a really helpful tool. So check out, you may already have that in your practice management software. And let's see, I'm gonna stop that screen share there. The next thing I wanna talk to us, you about is communication with your team. We've talked about the tools that you can use in communicating with your team, but I also wanna to talk to you just about the idea of making communication a priority. You may have people on your team that have never worked from home. You may have people on your team that um, are used to working from home. And so here are some things that I think are really gonna help them. And that is, I want you to go ahead and create regular check-ins with your team. I want you to do this both in a group setting and I want you to do it individually so that you're meeting with your team members on a one-on-one -on -one basis with some regularity. So whether it's you know, once a week or once, you know, once a day, whatever it is that works for your team, but I wanna make sure that we're doing that. Working from home can be very isolating, especially if you've never done it before. So we wanna make sure that we're staying in touch with these people. Um, so make sure in that time that I talked about checking in as a group, and getting together as a group, hopefully over some type of video conferencing. Um, I wanna make sure that you're including time and space for people to be themselves and share with others. You know, the kind of what we would have called, you know, water cooler talk. I wanna make sure that we have an opportunity and a space to do that. We wanna keep morale up. We wanna to talk to people about what's happening in their lives. Um, you know, we wanna make sure that this is not um, we, want, we want to keep it a very uh, happy workplace, even though we don't have a physical workplace. And so we want to use tools like the video conferencing or like Slack, where we can create a separate channel for what are you doing this weekend? You know, what's your best joke you've got? You know, whatever we can do to make this a very enjoyable experience. Um, so make sure to save space for that, whether it's virtual space or time. 
Um, one of the things I like to do is um, my mom lives out in Florida and we don't get to see her a lot. And so we'll do uh, dinner with her once a week. And basically we set up the iPad at the end of the table and we're all eating our food. She's eating her food. And we just talk like as if she was there in person and you know, how was your day? What happened this week? How are, how's this person doing? Um, you know, much like you might do with your team around a conference table or a break room table, you know, set up the video conference and let's all have lunch together. Maybe we talk about work, maybe we don't talk about work, um, but let's have that open line of communication. Speaking of open lines of communication, um, it is another great tool that we can use these video conferences for is we can have a situation where we're not even necessarily talking or conferencing together, but we've got that open line of communication. So for example, I have a team member that on occasion will go ahead and open that video conference line and maybe she'll be working on her own thing, I'll be working on my own thing, but we're there in case we need to talk to each other. This works really well for team members that are used to having desks near each other and have jobs that rely upon each other very closely. Um, obviously they're not physically near each other anymore, but if they can have that open Google Hangout or that open Zoom channel right there so that they can be talking back and forth as they're trying to be more productive, if that's gonna help them for their productivity, then we wanna make that available to them. So please do encourage your team to do that if it's something that's gonna be helpful for them. And then um, also remember, your team is not going to have an opportunity to basically get that commute home. Um, a lot of times people rely upon that as a bit of a detox time. You know, I spent some time working in the city and that train ride to and from the city from the suburbs was a great opportunity for me to kind of clear my head and you know put a work to side put work aside for a minute and be able to just relax before I walked into the kids and walked into home. Um, and working at home, you don't have that opportunity. You know, you go straight from work to home and vice versa. So you might want to think about working with your, um, you know, providing some type of benefit to your team. Um, some of the things I think would be helpful are things like um, the Calm app, or maybe you've heard of Headspace. Either one of those are great tools to kind of give your team a minute to sit back relax, clear their heads before they move either from work to home or home to work or whatever transition they're working on. Because again, we don't have a physical transition to help us with that. So being able to take that time and space to do that with or without the guide of an app would be very, very helpful. And if you're having a long conversation with your team, encourage them to get up from their desks or wherever they're working and take a walk outside. I mean, this is a great opportunity for us to be able to reconnect with nature, get out there, you know, get that fresh air that's going to keep us all so healthy. Um, so, you know, if this is a long conversation and you know it's going to be a bit of a, a an interaction, tell them to put on their headphones and start work walking outside, or maybe you do the same. Maybe you do your morning check-ins while you're walking, you know, walking around the block. Um, but let's make sure to take care of ourselves and take care of each other. If your team gets sick, which is of course a very real possibility these days, we want to make sure that we're aware of that, number one, stay in communication so you know what's going on. If they're unable to work, make sure that you know and that you have backups. You know, make sure you're working with those outsourced paralegal services. Make sure you're working with those outsourced uh, attorney services, those contract attorney services, so that we can make sure the work is getting done even when our employees aren't the ones doing it. Um, I also want to encourage you to focus more on the work that's being done and less on the amount of time that your team is working. We talked a little while ago about how some people are going to have more availability and easier availability than others, depending on their situation. And so we want to make sure that you're focusing on how and when the work is getting done, as opposed to the idea that, oh, she worked eight hours the other day. Well, eight hours might mean a lot or it might mean nothing, frankly, depending on the quality of that work. So let's make sure that we're focusing on the quality of the work. So we're getting close to the end here. Last topic I wanna cover, but definitely very, very, very important. We're talking about money. I don't have a poll for it, but let's drink. Okay. I wanna make sure that you guys all have, oh shoot, I should have made a poll for this. I wanna make sure you all have the ability to take credit card payments. If you aren't already, you need to. 
This is the easiest and fastest way to get paid. And so one, of, uh, one tip that I'll give you is that if you do not have credit card processing services or you're concerned about getting them because you don't want to pay a monthly fee or something like that, take a look at LawPay because LawPay does integrate with a lot of practice management software and most of the times when it does they will waive that monthly fee which means you're really only paying for it when you use it or when a client pays um, via law pay so it doesn't cost you anything has to go ahead and sign up um, and integrate with your practice management software so you're not paying anything um, and if you never use it you never use it but i just don't want you to be caught in a situation where the client says you know what, I'd love to pay you, but all I've got is this credit card. Then yeah, let's take their money. Um, we can have a whole different conversation about the three and three and a half percent we're gonna pay or whatever, but let's just at least sign up so you have that option available to you. You don't wanna get stuck in the um, situation where you don't have the option. Find out if your bank allows for mobile deposit and check your local bar rules because it would be super nice when that mail check does come in the mail, if you could just deposit it from your mobile phone or if you have a staff, trusted staff member that's gonna do that on your behalf. But we wanna make sure that that's an option for you. Again, check your local bar rules to make sure that that's allowed. Check with your bank to see what their limits are because most of them do have limits, but that's a great technology that you may be able to take advantage of. Please, please, please make sure that your employees still get paid. If you are doing payroll um, such that checks are coming to your office with regularity, make arrangements for those checks to get picked up. Um, maybe talk to your staff about switching over to direct deposit so we don't have to deal with that anymore. Um, but let's go ahead and at least have the conversation with your staff so they know what to expect. I don't want anyone to be in a situation where, you know, whoops, we didn't think about that in advance and now we're two weeks in and we can't risk anyone not working. We need that money to, you know, we need the machine to keep going so that, that money keeps coming in. And let's make sure your staff is getting paid. So have that conversation with them so they know what to expect, especially if there are gonna be any changes. Now, keep in mind when you log in from home with your financial, the apps that you're using or websites you're using for your financial institutions, they will probably ask you to log in again or verify your login or whatever kind of verification they need to make sure it's you. Be prepared for that. Um, make sure that you have whatever information you need to make that happen and do it before you need it. Set it up before you need it so that when you do need it, you're not stuck racing around and trying to figure out how to make it happen. So make sure to do that. And then lastly, I want you to get together with your bookkeeper, um, whether you're the bookkeeper or you have it outsourced or someone in your office, um, talk to them about how payments are being made. This might be a great time to set up those online bill payments. You're doing it at home already. Set that up for the office so that you don't have to worry about it. Um, it will make it a lot easier. You don't have to worry about the mail. And don't forget, oftentimes you can get a discount when you sign up for that online payment. So make sure that you're talking to your bookkeeper about this. Here's the long and short of it, guys. This is very, very possible. This is very, very doable. And we wanna make sure that you have all the tools you need in order to do that. So again, I'm going to send you that weekly, um, I'm gonna send you the checklist and it's built out by day. Monday do this, Tuesday do that, Wednesday do that. Keep in mind, you can speed this all up. You can fast track this, you can get this done in a day. Um, but it has to be with intention and you have to be very focused on making sure that you get it done. I've left some blank spots on that checklist. If you wanna add your own stuff to it, fantastic. I will send it out this weekend so you can get started tomorrow if you want to. Um, you know, we can have this up and running within a matter of days and I hope that you do using the tools that we provided you. So you'll get the checklist, you'll get the list of resources that we talked about tonight, our contact information will be on there. I do want to share one last thing before we go. Let me get my screen share up here. Our contact information will of course be on the information that I send you or at Streamline Legal. Um, so do reach out to us at Peace of Mind at Streamline Legal if you have questions. Here are the free resources that we're sending to you um, tomorrow. I also wanna let you know we've added a new service offering. It's called a virtual office review. And what it's going to do is we're gonna walk through these things with you. If you aren't using the checklist or you have used the checklist and you're still unsure, either way, 
contact us. We're happy to help you out. It's a one-on-one -on -one call with you to make sure that you've got everything you need to turn this office virtual. And I also want to make sure that um, we're recommending any recommendations recommending any tools that will be helpful for you to combat your pain points. So if there are things on here that are specific to your practice that we didn't talk about, that's a perfect opportunity to go ahead and reach out to us. Let us review things for you. Let us make sure that you're on the right track and you don't have to worry so much. So please do reach out to us um, at Peace of Mind at Streamline Legal. We can go ahead and schedule that with you, set that all up. We can get it done within, the, you know, in the next week so that you don't have to worry about these things or you have that peace of mind. Um, we're also offering 10% off of our action plan, which is where we review all of your processes, not just your going virtual. And we're happy to do that at a discount as well. So guys, take care of each other. Be healthy. We're here to help. We'd love to hear from you and we will follow up with you guys next week to make sure that you have everything you need. Thanks for joining me again and have a great night.